Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in 1 Timothy chapter 5, and we are continuing our study here in verse 5. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw at the beginning of verse 5, it says, Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate. And we saw last lesson that, that Paul here is saying that a widow who is a widow indeed, he's referencing back to verse 3, honor widows that are widows indeed, real widows who have no one to take care of them. And then he says, and desolate, which means that throughout their life, what has life given to them? They Right now, they are alone. They have no one to take care of them. So he says here, now she that is a widow indeed and without anyone to take care of her or any possibility of being taken care of. It says, she. what does she do? There are two things that she does, a true widow. What she does is that first she trusts in God and she continues in supplications and prayers night and day. And that's where we begin this lesson. So a widow that is a widow indeed, first, first, she trusts in God. Now, the Greek word for trusts is elpizo, and it's in the perfect tense, and it's in the active voice. Now, elpizo means to hope. Perfect tense means that her hope is fixed on God and it is settled. It is immovable. It's not a hope that is growing, but it's a finished hope. Perfect tense means it's done and it's over with. It meaning that, meaning that her hope in God is completed. She has a, it's like she finished her, her exam. She, she graduated from high school. She graduated from college. She, she's not learning hope anymore. She has graduated and now she has a completed hope in God. Active voice means that she is directing her hope towards God, not upon anything else. This kind of widow has nowhere else to turn to. She has no husband, no children. Probably she has no property or no valuables. Her only hope was in God to provide for her. So Paul here says, now she that is a widow indeed, and she's desolate. She has nowhere else to turn to. What does she do? She trusts in God. Why? Because God is her only hope. God is her, is, is all that she has. And if she's going to live and survive in this world, it's going to be in, it's going to be by God, by the grace of God and by the, by the provisions of God. And, and we think of Naomi. Uh, we think of Naomi where, remember in, in, in the book of Ruth, Naomi, she goes back to, goes back to Israel because she finds out that there's that that God is blessing Israel again that the crops are growing so she goes back and make a long story short Boaz who is the near kinsman he's a rich man and he is a, he is the kinsman redeemer and wh what does it say in Ruth that what does Boaz say when when Boaz goes to the, the kinsman who's actually nearer than him. What does he say to the nearer kinsman? Naomi is what? Selling a piece of land. She's selling a piece of land. And he, 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 he questions the nearer kinsman and says, do you want to buy this land from Naomi? And the day that you buy that land from Naomi, 
you're also buying Ruth the Moabitess. Now, when Naomi went back to Israel, did she go back empty-handed? Well, no, she had Ruth with her. She had no husband, no children. Her, two, her husband and her two children died in Moab, right? So now she goes back to Israel, back to her homeland, but the Bible says that Naomi had land to sell. She had land to sell. It was her land that was from Elimelech, her husband. Now, so in a sense, did she have something? Did she have? Yes, she did. She had a parcel of land that did belong to her. But in the end, what good did it do her? What good would it would that land do her if no one would redeem it? She could have she could have a thousand acres of land and it would have she would have starved of, of she would have died of starvation. If no, if the kinsman redeemer would not buy it from her and provide for her. So here's here's this widow and she she has she may have possessions, but it, but what good does it do her if 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 she doesn't get support? And so here's a widow that, what does she do? She's a widow indeed, and she's desolate. But what does she do? She trusts in God. Her only hope is in God. And you know, at times in a Christian's life, God can lead them to a place where they see nothing good in this world. Have you ever been to, the, to a place in your life in, in your in your walk with God where God leads you to a, a place in your walk with him where you view this world and and you say and you think to yourself you know what there really isn't anything here for me where the luster of this life has faded away and the reality that there is nothing in this life that really fills our souls. I know I've been there many times and I'm there now in my life where I look at this world and do I see the beauty of it? Yes, there are many things about this world that I enjoy. I, I, I love scenery, I love certain places and I enjoy looking at them and, and, and seeing them. And, and there are things about this life that I do enjoy, that I do like. But overall, overall, I, this world is empty to me. It, it, it gives me an emptiness. Because why? Because as a Christian, this is not our home. It's not our home. We're not destined to live here forever. We, God has another home for us. And that's home. <laughs> That is where our home is. This isn't our home. This world is going to pass away. I've said it many times in my lessons. This world, God has already set a day and a time when this world will pass away. This isn't our home. And it's okay to feel empty in this world. It's okay in your Christian life to feel, feel vacant in this world. Because this world isn't your home. Yes, we love our husband. We love our wife or our children or our family members. We love, we love our friends, Christian friends. But beyond that, we see no hope, nor have any hope for what is in this world. If you've come to a point in your life where you have no hope in this world, that's okay. That's good. Don't, don't condemn yourself for it. That's good because it means that your heart is seeking those things which are above. As a widow with no means of support feels abandoned and rejected by this world, so also the Christian feels rejected and unwanted by a Christ-rejecting world. And it's at this time when the Christian looks to heaven and thanks God for a sure and a steadfast hope in God and in his word. I've said it many times. 
Colossians 3, right? If ye then be risen with Christ, and remember that Greek word if is first class condition, if and it is true, if and it is true that, that you have been risen with Christ, then what? Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Verse 2, what? Set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. Why? Because you are dead. You are to be dead to this world and alive unto God. Right? Set your affection on things above, not on things on this world, because you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. In God. This is what we as Christians are to do. If, if, if you see no hope and you look around and you see the, all the, the rumors of wars and the deception and the governments and all the, the crime and everything and you, and, and, and you're getting depressed, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Why? Because this is not your home. God's going to end this existence eventually. You, 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 you're destined for another home. You're destined for God's city. God's home. Uh, God has a, a mansion waiting for you. He's preparing a place for, Jesus said he's preparing a place for you. This isn't your home. This isn't your eternal existence. And I think like with the, I think like with the widow here, she trusts in God. Now she, she's, she, she's desolate. She has nothing here in this world to take care of her. And to provide for her. And she looks at this life. And this widow looks as I have no husband. I have no children. I have, I have maybe no land. But maybe she does have land like, like Naomi. But the land is, is, is no good to her if, if, if nobody's willing to buy it and give her money. And she looks around and says, what, what's the sense in being on this earth at all? And that's the way we look at life. We look at like, like the, the only reason why as a Christian we should be on this earth, uh, see any hope in this world is to see that we can lead someone to Christ. That, that the reason why I'm here is that it gives me more of an opportunity to reveal Christ to people. Not for me to make a, a mansion here on this earth or make lots of money and, 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 and buy things and enjoy, you know, enjoy the, the, the pleasures of this world. But it's, it's for us to have our hearts set on heavenly things. To have our hearts set your affection on things above, not on things on the thirst. Why? Because it's going to pass away. So, she trusts first a true widow. She trusts God. Why? Because he's, he's her only hope. And then it says here, actually, you know what? Because of time, we'll get into the next part. She continues in supplications and prayers day and night. All right? Until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.